I have with me here today Professor Elliot Sober from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He's in Cambridge to give a public lecture at the Faraday Institute later today. Um, and I wondered, Professor Sober, if you could just maybe sketch out a few of the themes that you're going to be talking about later today. I'll be discussing the idea of methodological naturalism, the idea that science uh, should not commit itself one way or the other on the question of whether God exists. And as a particular subpart of that broad topic, I'll be discussing uh, what evolutionary biology and biology more generally has to say about uh, the question of whether mutations are guided or unguided. Uh, this topic has a long history. Uh, Darwin's foremost uh, advocate in North America was Asa Gray, a, a botanist at Harvard, who was enthusiastic about Darwin's theory, but had one uh, not small disagreement with Darwin about how it should be formulated. Dar uh, Asa Gray wanted Darwin to include the idea that mutations are guided, and by guided, Asa Gray had in mind the idea of God's influencing the direction of, that mutations go in. Darwin didn't want to include that in the idea, and they had a very uh, fruitful and long-term correspondence and met in person on this issue. So the, the topic begins there. Uh, modern biology, uh, of course, knows a great deal more about the mutation process than Darwin did. And the standard way that the mutation process is described by biologists is by saying that mutations are unguided. And by this, biologists simply mean that mutations have causes but they do not occur because they would be good for the organisms in which they occur. Most mutations are deleterious, for example. And it seems to follow from this uh, standard piece of contemporary biology uh, that since mutations are unguided, that no one guides them. God has no role to play in the mutation process. So I'm going to be talking about the relationship between the biological finding and this question about whether God intervenes in nature uh, in the sense of influencing which mutations occur. And I'm going to argue that the theory uh, is in fact, evolutionary theory is in fact silent on this question. And that philosophical assumptions need to be put on the table to get a connection one way or the other between what biology tells, me, tells us and what we think about God's role, if any, in the evolutionary process. Mm, thanks so much. Now I know you've worked a lot in the area of the philosophy of biology. And I wondered whether you felt that that area um, got perhaps the attention it deserved compared to um, how people study the relationship between philosophy and other areas of science. If you look back in the, in the, in er, the early half, first half, let us say, of the 20th century, philosophy of science was dominated by philosophy of physics. There was some philosophy of biology, but not much. Uh, in the second half, bio, philosophy of biology became more prominent, and it's now one of the thriving areas of philosophy of science. So within philosophy of science and within philosophy more generally, I feel that philosophy of biology has a substantial uh, place at the table. Um, in the wider culture, things are a little different. Um, philosophers of science often are consulted about questions uh, about the philosophical meaning of results in physics. Um, uh, newspaper articles will describe what philosophers say about these things as well as what physicists say. Um, but in the case of philosophy of biology, uh, Philosophy of biology is a little less prominent, I think, than philosophy of physics would be in the, the corresponding question. So um, often um, when we'll see biologists uh, really having their say, and even when the questions are philosophical in part, there's a lesser contribution from philosophy of biology that one sees in, in the public press. How do you feel that uh, religious people have approached the subject of philosophy of biology? Um, I have no problem with that. I feel that it's very different from the way philosophy approaches it. There's a, uh, the tradition in philosophy of biology has been uh, inherited from the wider subject of philosophy of science, and it's been a very secular orientation. So I feel that uh, theologians and, relig and religious ideas uh, certainly have a, a, a relevance and their voices should be heard, but it's no substitute for talking to a philosopher. 
Professor Elliot Sober, thanks very much for your time. You're welcome.